So welcome back to History of Mathematics. We are going to finish up Chapter 10 of our textbook Makers of Mathematics. Ooh, Sophie's awake. On Newton's Circle, and we're going to talk about the work of Isaac Barrow. We had already talked about in a previous video his contributions to the fundamental theorem of calculus. And now we'll examine how his work on finding tangents actually influences the modern method that we use for finding arc length. So let me go ahead and switch to the document camera right here. So for finding arc length, of course, when we're talking about arc length, we're talking about the distance traveled along a curve. So the goal is to find the length of the curve, y equals f of x, from the point where x equals a to the point where x equals b. Now, the problem with this is that we are very good at measuring straight line distances, not so great at measuring curved distances. So this is going to be our strategy. Our strategy is we will approximate the curve with some straight line segments. And once we've got those straight line segments, we can use the distance formula to find the lengths of those segments. And then we'll add up all the segments to get an approximation for the total length of the curve. So let me go back up here and just add in a few of those segments just to give us an idea what's going on here. So maybe that, that's one segment right there, and then this is going to be a kind of a segment that drops down a little bit like that, and we'll keep on dropping, and then maybe we'll go over to here, and then we'll finish it off right there. Okay, so that is a collection of line segments that approximate the curve, and the more line segments, the better. Okay. So, of course, the... The distance between two points, well, we know that from our algebra classes, right? We take x2 minus x1, we square that, and then we take y2 minus y1, and then we square that. We add both of those together, and we take the square root, and that gives us our distance. Now, of course, um, x1, x2, those are the x-coordinates of our two points, right? For you to find the distance between two points, I need to give you the two points. So they'll each have an x-coordinate, they'll each have a y-coordinate. So the first point has x1 and y1 as its coordinates, and the second point has x2 and y2. So we take the change in the x-values, we square that, plus the change in the y values. In other words, I could also write it like this. Now, uh, something that we know from our calculus class is that delta y over delta x is basically the derivative provided delta x is small. Okay, the, the closer delta x gets to being 0, the closer this quantity gets to being the derivative. Okay, so if we were to rewrite it just a little bit, alternatively, delta y is approximately equal to f prime of x delta x. So in other words, I could replace the delta y in that expression with f prime of x delta x. Now you'll notice each term has a delta x. In fact, it has a delta x squared. So I'm going to factor that out.
In fact, I'm going to completely factor it out from underneath the square root. So, if I factor it out from under the square root, it's just going to be a delta x. Okay, now, this is the length of one of those segments. Okay, I can look at it this way. So, if I were to add up all the segments, that would give me an approximation. The more segments I use, the better the approximation is. To get the exact value, I would have to take a limit. Okay, so in other words, I've got a situation like this going on right here. I've got the limit as n goes to infinity. And I'm adding up a bunch of things here. i equals 1 to n. And what I'll be doing is I will be taking this expression squared times delta x. And of course, uh, since we remember our calculus, this is actually going to turn into an integral, integral of a to b, integral from a to b, I guess I should say, 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Okay, so without the limit, that is giving us an approximation of the arc length. When you throw in the limit, as the number of segments goes to infinity, this sum turns into an integral, and this expression gives us the arc length. Okay, now, in general, these arc length integrals can be kind of tough, so don't expect to be able to just write down any old function f of x and be able to do this by finding an antiderivative because of the square root business. Things can get a little tricky. So typically when we encounter this in a calculus class, they have engineered examples for us to use that will work nicely with this arc length formula. But the work that Stuart Hollingdale talks about Uh, over here, for example, on page like 239 of our book, Makers of Mathematics, it looks like a really complicated way to find tangent lines, but it turns out these are the fundamental steps that we would be doing in finding arc length. And that was one of Isaac Barrow's contributions, in addition to his work on the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that concludes our work in chapter 10. There's a, a little bit more, but there's not much mathematics after this point. For example, the author discusses Sir Edmund Halley's efforts in getting Newton to actually publish his results about the Principia Mathematica, if you remember from the previous chapter, Newton actually delayed publishing those almost 30 years. So he did the research for the Principia in circa 1665, and the actual results didn't start getting published until um, 1686. So there's a, there's a interval of several decades before Newton actually published his work. So Halley and Coates were instrumental in getting that to happen. So we are going to um, leave chapter 10 of Stuart Hollingdale's book Makers of Mathematics and head to chapter 11, which is about the contributions of Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, one of the other co-creators of calculus along with Isaac Newton. So we'll put a link right there to the next video and we'll continue our work through the history of mathematics.